Welcome to Köln, or Cologne in English, and actually a lot of Germans refer to it as Kölle. It's the fourth most populous city in Germany with about 1.1 million inhabitants. And today I'm gonna take you on a nice walking tour of this beautiful city along the Rhine River. And with that, let's go ahead and start the tour. Cologne is located not too far from the borders to Belgium and the Netherlands. It's in the state of Nordrhein-Westfalen, North Rhine-Westphalia. Just north of Cologne you'll find Düsseldorf, the state's capital, and south of Cologne is Bonn, the former capital of West Germany. We're gonna start the walking tour at the main train station, head over to one of the most impressive cathedrals in the world, the Kölner Dom, continue to the Rheinseilbahn, a gondola that crosses the Rhine River, take a stroll through the Rhine Park, head up to the Triangle Observation Deck, cross the Hohenzollern Bridge, enjoy the Rhine Garden with its restaurants and colorful buildings, make a quick stop at the Deutzer Bridge for the views, check out the costume store Deitas, and I'll explain exactly why that is of relevance, especially this time of year, walk past the Old Market over to Frü am Dom for a schnitzel and Kölsch, where I'll explain the beer etiquette of Colonians. It's very convenient to take the train to Cologne as the main train station is located right in the heart of the city. As you exit the station, you will immediately see the Kölner Dom, the Cologne Cathedral, undoubtedly the number one attraction of Cologne, towering over the city center. In fact, it's Germany's most visited landmark, attracting an average of 20,000 visitors a day. While most just call it Kölner Dom, its official name is Hohe Domkirche St. Petrus, Cathedral Church of St. Peter. This Catholic cathedral is the seat of the Archbishop of Cologne. As you can tell, it was built in the Gothic architecture style. It's the largest Gothic church in Northern Europe and has the second tallest spires. The towers give the cathedral the largest facade of any church in the world. As with many buildings from the Middle Ages, construction was spread out over many centuries. Construction began in 1248 and was halted around 1560. Attempts were made to complete the construction around 1814, but due to funding issues not much happened until the 1840s. It was finally completed based on the original medieval plan in 1880. So it took 632 years from laying the foundation stone to the completion. Cologne was severely bombed during World War II and despite being hit 14 times by aerial bombs and badly damaged, the cathedral remained standing. As you can tell, repair and maintenance work is constantly being carried out and you'll rarely see the building without any scaffolding as wind, rain and pollution slowly eat away at the stones. The medieval builders had planned this grand structure to house the reliquary of the three kings and making it a place of worship for the Holy Roman Emperor. You can see the Shrine of the Three Kings, the most celebrated work of art in the cathedral, right here behind the high altar. It is traditionally believed to hold the remains of the three wise men, whose relics were acquired by Frederick Barbarossa at the conquest of Milan in 1164. The shrine was opened in 1864 and was found to contain bones and garments. Interestingly, with a height of over 157 meters or 516 feet, the cathedral was the tallest building in the world back then but only for four years until the completion of the Washington Monument. And there is actually another connection to Washington DC as the St. Joseph's Catholic Church was modeled after this cathedral. In 1996, the cathedral was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List of culturally important sites. As such, and as being the host to the Shrine of the Three Kings, the Cologne Cathedral attracts tourists and pilgrims alike. In general, the cathedral is open to visitors from Monday to Saturday between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. and on Sundays between 1 and 4 p.m. 
As masses take priority, these times can always change, so make sure to check before visiting. 45-minute guided tours in English are offered at 3 p.m. The tour lasts for about 45 minutes and costs 10 euros for adults. While you might think we are done with our visit to the cathedral, there's actually two more areas to see and I highly recommend you visit those as well. First we are going to climb the south tower of the cathedral and the belfry, which are open to visitors starting at 9 a.m. and close at 4, 5 or 6 p.m. depending on when you are visiting, with the shortest hours during the winter months. The cost is 6 euros per adult and you do not need a reservation. You'll be climbing 533 stairs and going up 100 meters or 328 feet. Plan at least 30 minutes to just get up and down plus some additional time to enjoy the views. On your way to the top you'll pass the very impressive bells of the cathedral. Altogether there are 11 church bells, 4 of which are medieval. The south tower, which we are in, houses eight of those eleven bells, with the St. Peter's Glocke, the St. Peter's Bell, being by far the biggest. It is massive and seeing it in person is a whole different story than on video. Here's a picture with a person standing underneath it to give you a better idea. It was cast in 1923 and weighs an astonishing 24 tons, or 53,000 pounds has a diameter of 3 meters and 22 centimeters, or 10 feet and 7 inches, and is the second largest free-swinging bell in the world after the bell of the People's Salvation Cathedral in Bucharest, Romania. A quick side note, people from Cologne speak with a very distinct dialect and they call this bell the Decke Pitta, which loosely translated means fat or big Peter. Alright, let's continue further up. For the last steps, we take this metal staircase to get to the observation deck. You really have some stunning views from up here. The river you see is the Rhine, and the bridge is the Deutzer Brücke, which we will go to later on our tour. <music> head back down to visit the Cathedral Treasury, which is open to visitors from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The entrance fee for adults is 6 euros. Please note though that if you decide to do both, the tower and the treasury, you can get a combo ticket for just 9 euros total. The treasury is located in the medieval vaulted cellars from the 13th century under the cathedral. It houses precious reliquaries, liturgical utensils, manuscripts, robes, and insignia of the archbishops and cathedral clergy from the 4th to the 20th century. This concludes our tour of the Kölner Dom and we are moving on to the Rhein Seilbahn, a gondola that connects the west side of the city with the east going over the Rhine River. From the cathedral it's about a 30 minute walk north along the Rhine River to get to the gondola. It is located right next to the Cologne Zoo. The tickets are 5 euros per adult for one way or 8 euros round trip. You don't need a reservation. Note that the gondola closes in the winter time and is typically open between March and early November from 10am to 6pm daily. 
The gondola has been operating for over 60 years and has become an attraction in itself. More than half a million people per year go on the ride to experience a bird's eye view of Cologne and the Rhine River. The distance from one side of the Rhine to the other is 930 meters or 3050 feet and takes about 6 minutes. The exit of the gondola is at the north end of the Rhine Park, a 40 hectare large urban park along the right bank of the Rhine River. During the 50th anniversary of the park in 2007, it was voted Germany's most beautiful park. It houses a thermal spa built according to Roman standards right next to the gondola. During the summer months, locals and visitors flock to the park for relaxation or to get active like playing soccer or jogging through the park. And clearly the geese love this park too. As we get further south, we see the cathedral in the distance as well as the Hohenzollern Bridge. Before we cross that bridge to get back to the other side of the river, we are going to the Cologne Triangle, a roughly 100 meter tall building with an observation deck. It is open daily from 11 am to 8 pm and the tickets are 5 euros for adults. You really get a nice direct view of the cathedral, the bridges and the Rhine River. Alright, now it's time to cross over the Hohenzollern Bridge, which was constructed between the years of 1907 and 1911. Originally, the bridge was both a railway and road bridge. However, after the German military partially blew up the bridge during World War II in 1945, as Allied troops began invading Cologne, the road traffic decks were removed when it was rebuilt after the war. So now you can only pass the bridge by foot or train. In fact, it's the most heavily used railway bridge in Germany with more than 1200 trains daily connecting the main train station with the convention center station. As you can tell, there are tons of love padlocks spread all along the bridge. People started placing them on there in the summer of 2008. At some point, authorities actually got worried about the weight causing danger for the bridge statics, but ultimately it was concluded that there is no danger. In 2015, it was estimated that half a million logs had been placed along the bridge. We are now back on the other side of the river and turned left as we got off the bridge. This area is called Rheingarten and you'll find several restaurants with outdoor seating here. It's definitely a nice spot to grab a meal or even just a good German beer. This square is called Fish Market featuring some colorful old houses, a fountain and outdoor cafes. The church you see in the background is the Great St. Martin Church, a massive Romanesque church with a tower built on top of Roman temple ruins. That bridge in the distance is the Deutze Bridge, which is a road bridge. From that bridge you get another nice view of the St. Martin Church and the towers of the cathedral. Next up is Daitas, which is a costume store and you may wonder why is there a costume store and what's the significance? Well, Carnival in Germany is quite popular and Cologne is definitely the epicenter of the celebrations. Somewhat comparable to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. In Germany, the Carnival season officially starts on November 11th at 11.11 am and is known as the fifth season of the year. During the six main days of the carnival, which takes place from February 16th to the 22nd, 2023, all kinds of rules go out the window and the entire city is in party mode. Things definitely get wild and everyone is in costume. Don't even dare stepping out in regular clothing. There are multiple parades, dances and balls happening all over the city and the beer is flowing non-stop. And don't be surprised if someone asks to kiss you, it's known as a Bützchen and is seen as an expression of carnival high spirits, happiness and fun. If you agree to the Bützchen, 
the other person will give you a kiss on the cheek. To all of you that are going to Cologne for Carnival this year, I say Hölle Allah! Alright, moving on. A short walk through the city center, which has a pedestrian zone with lots of shopping. We pass the old market and get to this little square with the Heinzelmännchen Brunnen, commemorating the Heinzelmännchen, a mythical race of creatures appearing in a tale connected to the city of Cologne, akin to gnomes or elves. The Heinzelmännchen are said to have done all the work of the citizens of Cologne during the night, so that the inhabitants of Cologne can be lazy during the day. There's more to the story, but the main reason we are actually here is this place called Frü, which means early in German, a traditional German brew house offering the typical German cuisine such as schnitzel. It's named after Josef Frü, who was a brewmaster over a hundred years ago and he established the brew house. Cologne is where Kölsch comes from, a beer that is traditionally served in a small glass like this. Note that the servers will continue bringing you a new glass of Kölsch without asking until you place the coaster on top of the glass. If you don't do this and they bring another beer and you say you don't want any more, many servers will get angry. People from Cologne are, well, let's say a bit rough on the edges and very direct. However, since you watch this video, you are informed and are ready to visit Cologne and enjoy some Kölsch. Thanks so much for joining me on this tour of Köln. Next, check out this walking tour of Munich, one of my favorite cities in the world. And if you enjoy the tours I put together on this channel, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. And with that, I say thank you and Dankeschön!